What's up guys, welcome back to The Decent Garage. In today's video, we're gonna be installing a fuel pressure gauge on the OG crew cab and changing out the gauge pod from a three gauge dash mount to a four gauge dash mount. Before we get started, I did something exciting this morning. If you're on Instagram, you've seen this already, but take a look at this. Got some new wheels and tires. So they're Mastercraft Courser CXT ATs, 285.75R16 on Pro Comp 16 by 10s, negative 21 offset, and they look sweet. So I had put those black wheels on them. In fact, they're right here. I'm gonna be selling these. Uh, I burnt up that one tire when the truck kind of ran away. Um, but I never really liked the black wheel look on the truck. I thought I would love it and I never really liked that. Anyways, those are gonna be gone and we have new wheels and tires. And this thing just looks awesome. I think these wheels make the truck look perfect. All right, with that, let's get to installing this fuel pressure gauge. So I ordered this stuff from Gino's Garage. You guys know I love Gino's Garage. I called them, told them I wanted fuel pressure gauges for the OG Crew Cab and Prospector Bob. This is kind of a fuel hose kit that they sell with the banjo bolt and the snubber. Uh, the harness and the sensor and everything comes with the gauge and then the new washers for the banjo bolt they sent out as well so they also send instructions for everything and how to install it so let me show you on the truck what we're gonna tap into and how we're gonna install it also guys exciting news before we get going on the install the new crew cab has been named the official name is Betty White so uh, I had a poll on Instagram and YouTube and that was by far the consensus. So with that here is Betty White's official introduction. All right let's get going on the fuel pressure gauge install. So right here you can see this is the fuel filter housing down here you can see the fuel filter. There's two banjo bolts. This is the fuel feed line uh, to the fuel filter and this is the fuel feed line from the fuel filter to the injection pump. Uh, so you can tap your banjo bolt into either one of these but i'm going to tap mine in here the reason i chose to tap into that spot is because i want to know if my fuel filter is clogged as well by reading the fuel pressure if you tap into the other one it can tell you that you have great fuel pressure but the fuel filter may be clogged and you may not have good fuel pressure to the injection pump so we're going to go to this one here on the left we're going to pull that out uh, it's gonna have two washers on it, which we don't need to reuse because we got new ones. And then we'll put our new banjo bolt in right there. So this stock banjo bolt is 11 sixteenths. The instructions say you don't have to use Teflon tape, but it says you can, but just don't use a ton of it. So I'm gonna put just a wrap, maybe a wrap and a half on there. And the instructions say which fitting goes where, so that's pretty easy to follow. Okay, and then the sensor is gonna plug right into the snubber. So we'll put that on so we don't have to do it in the truck. All right, there we go. We're ready to put it in the truck. Little Teflon on the one that's gonna go into the banjo bolt. Let's go hook it up. All right, so we've got our line hooked in with our sensor. Now at this point, it's worth mentioning, I'm well aware that there's a couple different types of fuel pressure gauges. Uh, this is, I guess you'd call kind of a mechanical but electrical gauge. Um, honestly, I kind of would have preferred a full mechanical gauge, even though you run fuel into the cab. Um, I'm well aware of the drawbacks and the disadvantages to doing that, but I'm also aware of the advantages of doing that as well. But I think this one's gonna work out just fine as well. So now that we have the sensor hooked up, we're gonna route this line where we want it so it's kind of up out of the way. And then we can hook the uh, harness into it and go through the firewall and rearrange our gauges. All right, before we hook the harness up and run into the cab and run everything, 
we're gonna fire up the truck now uh, because I want to test and make sure we don't have any leaks at any of these connections first uh, if we do we'll just tighten them down a quarter turn at a time until we don't have a leak so I'll test that first then we'll start running wires into the cab all right we tested it no leaks at all very good sign so what I'm gonna do is go in the cab and uh, shove this end out the firewall and then connect it there so we've got the whole loom inside the cab all right so we're gonna be uh, replacing this mount with this one that kind of mimics the old Banks pod. This is from Glow Shift. It was like 50 bucks and it actually seems to be okay quality. So what I'm going to do is pull this off, pull my wiring down. I just had this Velcroed on there. So these gauges don't sit in here as tight as they do in this one, which may be a a product of it being a glow shift product uh, so what I do when that happens uh, I've run into that on this as well is I'll just wrap one wrap of uh, masking tape around it and then it just cinches in there pretty good if you need to you can do two wraps but that way it cinches in there good and there we go that actually took about five or six wraps of masking tape but now it's in there nice and snug and we can move all the other gauges over and put our fuel pressure gauge in guys let me show you where I'm at with this I have all the wires for all the gauges run up here and I'll show you this in just a second but the important thing when you're installing any gauges uh, you're gonna need a couple sources of power you're gonna need a dimmable source and a key on power now excuse the butt connectors this is how I installed the original gauges 10 years ago before I knew anything so it, it is what it is but it's held up just fine for 10 years now just gonna leave it like this and I just tapped into my key on source right here for the new gauge so you can tap in however you want now for the key on source you can tap into many options of fuses so uh, most people do it to the cigarette lighter fuse I actually did it to the backup lamp fuse but essentially most of these fuses are key on power like the radio would work stop lamps would work door locks would not work because they are not key on power they always work even when the keys off so you just need to make sure you use something that only gets power when the key is on I tapped into the backup lamps but really you can use anything that's key on power now for the dimmable source what I did was tapped into the these are the interior panel lamps so basically the lamps inside your gauge cluster so I tapped into that and that gave me dimmable power okay so that one is run straight up to the gauges for the dimmable power my key on power source I actually have this running out to a relay in the engine compartment into my fuse block in the engine compartment so it's fused as well and that seems to have worked really well so those are the two main things that you need so now heading back up here for the new gauge one other thing I'm gonna need is a ground wire so I'll just run a black wire down and ground it to where I've grounded many things over here for the radio this is all the wiring I'm gonna clean it all up, loom it all so it sits nice and flush up into the windshield, and then we'll hook it all up to the gauges. All right, now it's time to get all this loomed up. Uh, what I do is I hook it into the gauges first, and then I just put some wire loom around it and it works really well. Now, with this pod, they didn't have a cutout in the back for the wires to come through, so I just made a cutout right there because if you don't do that, the wires can come out from underneath but then what it does is it kind of props it up and, and it they're pointed down. So I, I made that little cutout there. It works really well. And uh, well, we'll see if it works really well, but I think it will. I'm gonna hook all the wires up. It, uh, like I said, it looks like a mess, but if you're the one installing it, uh, you know, label everything, know where everything goes. I've done this so many times on these gauges that I know where everything goes, but uh, just hook them all into the gauges. So let's get that done.
right guys, I've got it all hooked up. Let me show you uh, what it looks like underneath. Again, all those butt connectors were what I used 10 years ago to hook up the original gauges that I bought 10 years ago. It's worked just fine till now, so we'll just leave it. So that's gonna sit just like that. So let's see if they work. Perfect, so the fuel pressure's working, transtemp's working, uh, boost and pyro do not seem to be working. So I'm gonna check that wiring real quick. I think I may just have the two spades mixed up. Uh, and then I'm gonna button everything back, up, back together. You saw that I took the whole dash face off. You don't have to do that. Um, I ran the wires up through here but you can take that dash bezel off and you can access some of those wires here. So uh, it's not great access, but uh, if you feel like you're not able to see them or get to them, that does help a little bit, but I don't know if it's worth it. So that's why I took that off. So I got to put that back on, loom up the wires, and then let's take it for a test drive and see how all the gauges work. All right, guys, it is installed. It's running perfectly reading about 15 psi goes down to 14 when i get on the throttle but that's perfect fuel pressure for a ve pump so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you haven't seen the install of the tack that i did on this truck i'll link that video right now on the screen so you can go watch that thanks for your support and we'll see you guys in the next video